Hey there folks. So I'm just about to head up to the Eugene Women's March and on my way I spotted this red tail hawk and now it is spotting me back since I'm standing here taking a video of it. Anyway for uh, for folks who believe such things maybe the Red tail hawk here is some sort of an omen. Interestingly, now there's some crows that have decided to come in and harass the hawk. Here comes the crow. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm here in Eugene, Oregon. It is the day of the Women's March, and the women are gathering here at the Eugene Federal Building. You can see um, Eugene's finest, and I do use that term very loosely, are deployed. We have University of Oregon Police and Community Service Patrol. So the boys in blue are here. There's there's quite a few folks gathering. I just uh, was on my way to the parking area a few minutes ago, and um, while I was parking, I kind of took a little look around to see how many folks are here, and <clears throat> it looked like kind of a small turnout, but it's still early. The event was slated to start at 10 o'clock uh, Pacific time. So 10 Pacific is not so long ago. And it's the beautiful Eugene Federal Building. Very modern. Our old federal building is made out of brick. And if you're uh, familiar with the Pacific subduction zone, then you know brick buildings really just won't hold up in the, Pacific, uh, in the event of a large earthquake. So this modern metal and glass building, my guess, is built at federal standards for safety in case of uh, an earthquake. But this building is a brick and metal building. I watched them build it, and this building will not hold up in the event of an earthquake. So anyway, uh, just a little bit of contrast earthquake resistant building no no bricks at all you know it's metal and glass and then this is a non earthquake resistant building it is made up largely of bricks so anyway uh, we have to think about those types of issues here in in Eugene because we live in the Pacific, Pacific subduction zone and here we are guaranteed of an earthquake. It's not even a question of will there be an earthquake, there, there will be. So, some folks up here at the podium speaking. Try and get in, let you guys hear what's going on. And for those of us up here on this stage, Mayor Vinnis, uh, and, and for everyone out here in this uh, audience, we have a responsibility to keep the door open behind us, to support the next wave of leaders in this country. 
women, young people, people of color, to see them, to lift them up, and to amplify, amplify their voices. And one of the women I was incredibly proud to support and work so hard for last year is the newly sworn in Labor Commissioner, Heather, or Lane County Commissioner, Heather Buck. Her successful campaign means that there is now a woman at the table at the Lane County Commission leading the way. Ladies and gentlemen, Heather Buck. Thank you, Representative Fahey. Two years ago, I was standing on Pennsylvania Avenue with a million other women, men, and children in awe. My mother was here with my then three-year-old daughter marching with you. Then I came home, then I ran, and then I won. I could never have done it by myself. All of you here and in D.C. and all over the world, just your mere presence makes an impact on lives here locally and around the world. There are several of us up here that worked with Emerge Oregon, an organization that helps recruit and train a qualified women to run for office at every level of government. If you're thinking about running, pair up with somebody who may have ran before, or an organization that helps get involved with elections, because we have a lot more work to do. There are lots of ways in which you can get involved. People sometimes think it's just me, I don't know what to do, but I feel passionate about a particular subject. So go seek people who are also passionate. Knock doors. We have a lot of doors to knock around here in the next election cycle. There are a lot of offices waiting for your name on it. If you're not somebody who's who wants to go knock on doors, make calls, volunteer. The volunteers make it happen. You make it happen. So find somebody that you really want to run for office and ask them, would you consider running for office? Go knock on doors for them. Call, volunteer, and you will make a difference. Each and every one of you will make a difference. Thank you. Okay, give it up for Heather Buck and Julie Fahey. Celebrating that women's wave in politics, right? Okay, we are gonna give it up to Vice Dance Resist one more time, so.
time today, I'm not going to give it away. We'll leave it up to mystery. Okay, we are going to walk, walk into our last and final speaker before we march. Does everybody feel blessed? We are definitely blessed with some awesome weather because we thought this was going to be ten times worse. So thank Mother Earth for this. Okay, so give it up for my good friend, uh, the one who wrangled me into being a organizer, the one I, uh, I look up to. I go to her for a lot of advice, and she's the one, first person to check me on my stuff. They, sorry, they, them, they, them pronouns. Everybody get it right, myself included. Okay, give it up for Tasha Burkant, everybody. I'll give some props to Monica. Monica's known me for years under she, her pronouns, but I don't have any of that slack for anyone else, FYI. Uh, hello, my name is Tasha Burkay. I am born and raised here in Eugene. Uh, I am a disabled and queer activist and organizer. The recent things I've been up to is that I was the deputy regional field director for Multnomah County for Team Oregon Pack which is a very long and complicated way to say that I worked seven days a week to re-elect Kate Brown up in Portland. Thank you, I cried a lot. And that is actually a story that I want to tell you because unlike a lot of your speakers here today, I am not a woman. I am a non-binary person. And thank you. Unfortunately, I have a story to share about how Oregon feminism has hurt me because it was not inclusive and it was not intersectional. How many of you know about Measure 106? Yeah, we all voted no on it and it fucking tanked. Thank God for us. The Kate Brown campaign worked really closely with the No on 106 folks for all of the months that I worked for them. So that means every single weekend we were having canvases where I was hearing about abortion be framed as a woman's issue every single time to protect a woman's right to choose. And I have to let you know, not only women have uteruses, and not all women have uteruses. So you, left, you left behind folks like me. You left behind folks like trans men. And I kept up with that for months on end until we were finally in the last home stretch, the 10 days that we had till election day. We were a statewide coalition. Cecile Richards, of all people, was there with Kate Brown that day. It was one of our last big pushes. I don't know. Cecile Richards is great. Y'all should, like, applause for her. But unfortunately, that was the day that I finally had enough. It had worn down on me every single time, and I sat in a back corner office as Cecile Richards was rallying up the crowd and just cried. Because every single weekend, I got to hear woman's issue. I got misgendered. I got invalidated every single weekend. Every single phone call I made for Planned Parenthood and no on 106 to get volunteers for those, I had to be invalidated and use that messaging. And there's a reason for that. They didn't start by talking about it as a woman's issue. The no on 106 folks, amazing campaign staffers, they started as a gender neutral campaign because they wanted to be inclusive. And unfortunately, it was polling data that showed that if you talked about it as a gender neutral issue, and not a woman's issue, it was not going to go over well. That pulling it as a woman's issue was what would rally the voters. And I have to let you know, you all are responsible for that. You are that voting demographic. You are that polling data. You need to be mindful of that privilege and not just rally around those sound bites because you are leaving people like me behind. And feminism, includes all of us. And it's not just, it's not just white non-binary folks and white women and white trans women. You're still leaving behind people of color. <laughs> Every single one of you with the city of Eugene junior police badges, I want to let you know your privilege is showing. Fuck right. Especially after we saw Charlie Landeros killed these last couple weeks by EPD. Every single one of you that thought of that as a good thing, without looking in, a person of color shot and killed by police, and listened to the media pickup, not knowing that it was a parent asked to go to a middle school, that was not an active shooter in a middle school, 
but the folks that instantly thought, oh, must be an active shooter. Y'all's privilege is showing. You are leaving behind so many folks with that white cis het feminism. And I know I'm like the doom and gloom to end on that, but it's not fucking okay. And having been in organizing, I can tell you a lot of different ways that we're going to build power. So with that, knowing that you hold that privilege, if you are, especially if you're a person who's never felt unsafe around the police, I want to know, are you going to show up to the unsavory type of things? And are you going to volunteer? That's where it's really going to happen. It's great to build power here. Like, there is a lot of us. It is great to see it. But you have to go through the rest of the year. Because I, I heard so many damn excuses when I was working for Kate. Like, oh, I just, I'm just really busy, you know. I just don't have time right now. And I'm sorry to tell you that a lot of marginalized folks don't have that time to give to begin with. So Netflix will have to wait. And you're going to have to go volunteer. And you're going to have to leave your excuses at the door. the endings of Abolish Ice, A Cab, and actually go out there and get some shit done. I love Tasha so much. All right, so let's give it up for them. That is an amazing light that just got done talking to you. I just wanted to let you know. I love you, Tasha. Everybody else loves you, too. Okay, I just wanted to make an announcement that we are, uh, we have a list over at the NOW booth as far as getting involved with uh, other aspects of the community because that's what we need to do. We need to get involved because there's a lot of work to do in this city. We need, to, we need to start tackling a lot of local issues involving racism and gender inequality. Huge, huge, huge issues that we need to work on. Also, I wanted to make an announcement that on January 29th, from 3 to, I believe, 6, there is a community share fair going on at the, what is known as the Toaster Church. <laughs> January 29th, from 3 to about 6. We need volunteers and we need the community to show up. And I just wanted to let you know that we are also stalling so that our march leaders can get, uh, get it together. We have Samba John that will be leading us, along with other marchers. And they are over there. So, do you want to direct yourselves this way? For the time being, we will get it going. Let's see, is there any music possibly available until Samba Jack can get ready? Thank you everybody for being here. Give it up for yourselves. get ahead of the line here. When women in non-binary issues are under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back! When women in non-binary issues are under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back! When women in non-binary issues are under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back! Are we ready? Woo! Thanks for being here. This is Samba Jai, their local Samba group.
like we have a late samba guy. These guys are the people who protect rapists, just so you know. Eugene Police Department, if you're watching, I think you're utter crap. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thanks for coming. Everybody say hi to the federal officers. No, you don't have to. They don't deserve it. Here goes lots of people. It's a pretty big march. Lots of babies here, little tiny people. The sign says, we are the granddaughters of the witches you could not burn. I love that sign. Lots of I'm with her signs. It's my favorite sign so far. It says Chinga La Migra. It's my favorite sign so far. I love it. Some good ones, aren't there? I like to remember that there were Latinos or, yeah. or mes mestizos here before there were Caucasians <laughs> in the Willamette yeah. Valley. Right. Yeah. Thank you for being here. Federal officer getting a little bit of thanks. Yes. Great, great sign. Great sign. Some folks taunting the federal officer because he's not getting paid, which I think is hilarious. Climate change is real. President Trump is a hoax. I love that sign. It's a no shutdown sign. brought you into this world and a woman will vote you out. It's a great sign. This guy is an ally here. It's a great sign. Two, four, six, eight. Donald Trump is really fake. Three, five, seven, nine. Nothing rhymes with orange.
Ah, ah. Good to see some folks out there. This is what democracy looks like. All right, folks, um, as you can see, it's a pretty big march here. There's a lot of folks, there's a lot of little people running around here. And um, there's a federal, there's one federal officer that I saw back here behind me, but that's the only one I've seen so far. I have a feeling their budget might be suffering a little bit. But here in a minute, uh, do what I like to do and see if we can go around and, and spot the spooks. All right, let's play a little game of spot the spooks here. Try not to go against the flow too much, but let's just see if we can use her. So, in my experience, the uh, plain clothes guys, they like to wear um, a hoodie and a jacket, kind of like I'm wearing because it, it makes it harder for you to see the, the obvious gun and um, bulletproof vest. So just looking at here at the folks, you can see kind of a lot, that type of clothes. Still a lot of great signs. I appreciate that. Have a great day. So again, for the folks just joining in, this is the Eugene Women's March. I'm not very good with numbers, but um, let's see. Just in about maybe 20 square feet here, there's, I don't know, I would say close to that number of people. So my guess is that there are thousands of people here because this line has been marching by for at least the last uh, five minutes easily so there's there's I would say there's maybe maybe a thousand fifteen hundred people could be more which only represents about one percent if that of, of Eugene's population so you know it is a very great turnout and uh, it's good to see people out comes the very tail end. So what I'm going to do is just very quickly see if we can spot. Smart woman in the office! <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna move this. So the march is largely emptied out here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go and try and get ahead of them by going down the surface street here. And the folks who are still left over here are the medics and some of the organizers.
All right, I'm gonna let you guys go and come back once it's a little bit more interesting.